Hello Dynatrace app developers and welcome back to another episode of Inside Dynatrace Apps. Today we have a great episode lined up for you because we are joined here by Stefan Wasawa and he will be going through with us today a little bit about the Visual Studio Code extension that we use for Dynatrace apps. And we'll be learning how we can even do DQL queries within it. So. Without further ado, let's learn a little bit more about Stefan. Hello, thank you for having me in this round. So I'm product manager at Dynatrace uh, with lots of developer background and we are working on focusing on the developer experience, especially for developing Dynatrace apps here. And we yeah, are happy to be here to show you the VS Code extension today. Super cool. Before we get started, why don't we actually learn what is the VS Code extension? Yeah, the VS Code extension basically is the UI part for the Dynatrace App Toolkit. And so maybe as you know already Dynatrace apps, how to develop Dynatrace apps on the Dynatrace platform. Uh, the toolkit supports you with all this functionality to create apps, run the developer server and so on and so forth. And the VS Code extension basically should help you to um, navigate through these commands, uh, mm -hmm. add additional functionality, how to generate functions, app functions for example, or big part in there, how to write DQL queries and reuse the queries in your code. I wonder what can we actually use it for? Maybe you can show me. So as mentioned before, here when you hit the, the Dynatrace icon here over mm -hmm. here, uh, you would see the list of all the Dynatrace DTF functionality. As you know from the toolkit, you have like the start development server, build your app, deploy your app, Configure app. So now we have a um, configuration UI in here where you can uh, jump through all the fields, app ID, giving an app your name, adding custom icons, but also stuff like you want to add scopes uh, or CSP rules with explanation in there. So we here have the chances to explain, it, explain everything you need to, to get going in that direction. Wow, this is really nice because now you're actually it's everything put into one place so you don't need to go all into the app you can just change all your scopes in here wow yeah as said here for example you have also updating your uh, dependencies and nice thing generate app functions so the app functions are like the back end of your app mm -hmm. uh, to your to sub support the ui and let's say i just want to create here one of these dynatrace app functions in the background the toolkit is triggered um, I can put in some parameters and as a result here I get now the app functions all listed mm -hmm. in my VS Code extension. I can trigger them, pass over some custom payload to test the functions in there. Uh, and here I see this example code just to copy paste and reuse in my code. Wow, that's really cool. It's nice how everything's sort of put together into one space for you to use. Yeah. <laughs> but one of the coolest features in here I really want to show is like how to use the DQL queries because mm -hmm. these are very very powerful and I think most of the developers uh, ran into the situation for example they get a very complex query from the data analysts and reuse, have to reuse it in their application and the idea is for example um, how to do that so it's easy as that so you go for example to the source code file uh, add a new file and call it your name logs dql. Mm -hmm. You see this funny icon here. You see immediately this Grail uh, for dql. In this file, you get all this auto completion support you know from notebooks. For example, if I go in here and I say fetch logs and let's summarize the logs, summarize by log level. So I want to see all error and info logs, for example, of the last week log level and if I hit run in here you see this button up there so I can select for which time frame this is um, very helpful if you want to debug a query which has maybe a set time frame mm -hmm. but here I want to say okay let's check the data over the last seven days and it is connected to my environment hence I see immediately the output there I see okay these are all the logs happening over the last week basically mm -hmm. and this is very helpful to see the trace and response in my IDE because from there on, I know how to access these fields from TypeScript, so to say, how to mm -hmm. reuse it in the code. And this is really great because now you're actually seeing this within Visual Studio Code and it's not having it in a notebook and then you're doing your app over here. It's actually getting it all in one. Really yeah. cool. So this is now you have the query uh, in the IDE, but uh, 
the really cool thing here comes. Now, if I say, okay, I want to reuse this query now on multiple places in my code. So I have, we have this annotation, let's say name, and I can put in it a name. And there, uh, as soon as I, if I hit save, you would see the generate pop up down there. And there you see here in these files, generated files. So now this is a named query. I look into this generated file and you will see here we get now a TypeScript function uh, calling this query. So this is how I reuse now the query in my code. I head over to my uh, TypeScript file, for example, and there I can really say run query and there I get the auto completion run query like logs, auto completed and hit run. So, so that's how and to reuse the code. So how is this the most sort of advantageous to do this? One big advantage, you have a clear separation between the DQL files mm -hmm. and your TypeScript code. Then uh, you have this autocomplete, not just have a string con concat, so to say, in your code, but you have clear DQL experience in your ID. You write your query, you focus on your query, how to get the data, do all the data processing, filtering, and so on and so forth. So you have the, the result you expect and just reuse this in your code in the multiple places. Even if you want to do corrections and so on, you just edit your query there. Super simple. <laughs> yeah. Often in, in apps you want to, to, to have, you have user interactions in your app. So you want to interact with your query. You need parameters, mm -hmm. for example. And even you are covered in here. So we can say, for example, we want to imagine you want to have in, for this query uh, a selector for the log level you want to filter for. So you go in here, set the param, uh, we call it log level, and pass over a default value as a fallback. And I just can access or add it to the query like filter and I say log level and equals our variable, so to say. We go that route. Uh, and now um, I can hit run. It's use, it uses the default value. And if you have a look in the generated file again, you see now the uh, function has now parameter in there. So yeah. as again, heading back to our TypeScript file, you can pass the parameter and this is then treated in your query. Very cool. In terms of who this would be accessible to, we're basically saying anyone using Visual Studio Code yeah. needs to be using this extension, right? So anyone using Dynatrace apps, got to be using this because For this sure. is going to help. For sure. Makes life easier, much easier. Yeah, much easier. <laughs> all from putting in your scopes to doing uh, all the configurations for your app, all the way down to this very cool feature of actually being able to write DQL within your app. How can we find out more about the Visual Studio Code app? So first place to go, Dynatrace Developer Portal. Yes. <laughs> Have a look there. Uh, you get there a few explanations how to use it and uh, where to install it. So on the one hand, just head over in your IDE to your extensions tab, mm -hmm. hit in Dynatrace, um, and you will find it in the list Dynatrace apps. That's the uh, extension you want to go for. Install it and you're up and running. So if you haven't done already, go ahead and head over to Visual Studio Code and go and download the new extension. Great, that's all for today. So I would like to thank you very much, Stefan, for joining us and thank teaching you. us a little bit more about the Visual Studio Code extension. It's been great to have you here on the show. Thank you, loved it. And that's it. Thank you. See you. Bye.